Have you ever been so broke and so scared that you actually started like making in your head you started making a list of all the people you know that have money that maybe maybe they might give you a loan to just help you make your rent this month like oh my god if this person maybe they'll loan me a thousand bucks if this five thousand maybe I could win the lot like have you ever been so scared that you literally started like making deals with God people actually do this you go God, please, please, I promise I won't be, I will do, I will be the best person ever for the rest of my life if you just help me get through this, this defining moment of absolute terror. In, in this video, I want to tell you the, the real story of how I got a window cleaning business off the ground in the middle of the winter, flat broke with an eviction notice on my door, debt collectors calling me, I could barely keep my cell phone on. We had six days to vacate our apartment, six days to move out. And, and it was terrifying. And I and I was just barely keeping a driver's license. I was had fees up the so my wife was sleeping and it was like two o'clock in the morning. Or it was like midnight or something. And, and, and I snuck out of the bedroom in our little tiny apartment. We had six days to get out. Eviction. And I sat on the toilet and I like closed the door and I started texting on my phone, thinking of friends who have money. And I reached out to my buddy Eric Reno. I know you've seen him in my videos. He was already doing very well, and I knew that he had money. And I and like, I'm so embarrassed to admit this. I actually sent him a text message saying, "Dude, I, I will literally give you collateral. I give you my watches, my st whatever. I think I had some studio equipment." please loan me a thousand dollars just to get through this month I promise I'll give it back to you in 60 days or when the spring breaks I'm so scared right now please dude I promise you I'm good for it please and I, I, I was hovering over the send button on the text message and I was like I can't do this and I was so scared and I felt like I was at the end of my rope I had no other options I had over I had 40 over 40 job applications in all over the place. I had well-worded resumes. Nobody was hiring. I had gotten a CDL for driving trucks. I couldn't find a truck driving job. And we're, we're broke, dude. I was terrified. I pressed the send button and I sent him the text message. And he sent me back the most amazing message. That it was the defining moment. Okay, that's the end of this video. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what he said right now, dude. He sent me back like a three-page test mat, dude. I know exactly what you're going through. I love you, my brother Keith. Man, I've been through it. I was in a crappy apartment with my wife having a, a second baby, and we couldn't keep the lights on. It was so scared. He said, "I'm absolutely not going to loan you a penny." You need to toughen up, Keith. You need to get out there and hustle. Nobody is going to do it for you. You've got to pull your shit together and reach inside of you. Whatever he said to me, I don't remember the exact words, but it was basically like reach inside of you and pull out that hustle. Reach inside of you and pull out that hustle because nobody is going to do for it. You've got to get out there and face your fears and hustle. And in that moment, as soon as I read that text message, like, it was, the, it was a type of brotherly love that I needed at that moment. It was the knife that cut and it hurt, but it cut to the truth. It was the truth. And I had no idea in that moment how I was gonna make it happen, but I was like, you know what? Now I'm dead. I'm already dead. I'm gonna walk into my death. I'm going to march into the battle of my death, and I'm going out swinging now. That's when you face the bully. It's when you face the Goliath. It's when you face that that, that entity, that demon outside that's trying to get in and eat your family, right? If you saw someone outside of your house with gasoline and a match trying to, trying to put gas and burn your house down, would you just sit in the house and let it happen? No, you would literally get a baseball bat and, well, I don't want to say shit like that. <laughs> if I saw someone, you know, oh, you should call the cops. No, you got to go out and do something about that, right? You have to do it. You have to take action. If somebody came into your front room and they dumped... A, they took your trash can and dumped trash all over your floor, right? You would escort that person out of your house. So that's what's happening in this world. It's like you're born alone, you die alone, naked and afraid, and nobody is going. There's no ship coming to save you. And when you realize that, and you're in the middle of the ocean, and there's, you're screwed. That's when. That's when it happened. You know when a lion hunts a gazelle there's a shift that happens in, in the brain. 
it's like hey, I learned this from Chris Brady. He's a, a speaker. He's amazing. He said there's a blue bag in your in your brain. It's got this liquid, right? It's like a metaphor. And when that thing breaks open and the blue, the blue liquid goes in your brain, you change and you can never be the same ever again. And once that switch is thrown, you become. He he says when a lion hunts a gazelle, it will actually pick out one gazelle, and when it goes after it, it's like a heat-seeking cruise missile and it will ignore any other gazelles that are just sitting around grazing because it's going for that one target, that one goal. That's ex when you hone in on what you want, you will literally walk through fire to get it. You will you will do anything. Oh, there you are. I was looking up here. So people are like it drives me nuts when you videotape when you're on the road. I'm right here, dude. I'm sitting in the lane, bro. It's just driving you nuts cuz you can't see the road. <laughs> Okay, going to the office here. Gotta go to the office and check the mail, dog. So this is what I did. I was looking at a small business opportunity magazine, trying to find, in searching on Google, business startups under $1,000. I'm like, I don't have a thousand bucks. Business startups under 500. I don't have 500 bucks. Small businesses that you can start under $100. You know what one of them was? Window cleaning. So my wife comes home from work, it's snowing outside, it's freezing, I'm sitting on the couch all depressed, I'm looking at a, a small business opportunity magazine, and I found some dude named Don Marsh, uh, window cleaning. I go, oh my God. I can't find a job. I'm literally gonna get a scrubber and a squeegee, and I'm going to go clean windows in the winter. I'm like, but people don't need their windows clean in the winter. And then I had no choice. I'm like, I'm gonna make their windows clean and I went around and I noticed that there was all this salt all over the windows everywhere and the windows had needed to be clean more than in the summer and, and basically I went out and I was getting all this rejection for two three days in a row nobody wanted their windows clean and I realized it was because I, I didn't want it bad enough I didn't I didn't understand how to communicate uh, but when I broke the seal and was able to sell a couple jobs, it triggered to me that these, these small business owners in these strip malls and plazas, they're busy. They don't even care if their windows need to be clean because they've got so much going on. You have to break their pattern and do a pattern interrupt. You have to do something to shock them and get their attention. And because 12, 15, 20 bucks to 25 bucks is nothing to somebody who's operating a, a successful business, it's nothing to them, right? So you got to go in there with a, with a level of enthusiasm, and it's called positive expectancy. An attitude of positive expectancy means that you won't take no for an answer. You, you're positive, and you have an expectation. Dude, dude, I'm here right now. I'm the local window cleaner. I'm going to clean your windows and make them shiny, and I'm only going to do it for 15 bucks. No, no, I'm doing it right now. And they'll be like, who, he who has the most certainty wins. If you can generate more certainty than even a person who's doing a million bucks a year in that moment, they'll, they might collapse uh, in a good way. Let me pull over here. They're gonna be like, uh, what did you say, 15 bucks? Just do it, make sure you do a good job. So, you clean their windows, you dry them down, you wipe down the frames, you give them a receipt, you collect your 15 bucks, and then you say, I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> In two weeks, yeah, man, I, I clean a lot of windows in this area. I'll be back in two weeks, and I'll see if they don't need to be done. That's fine, but I'll, I, later, I'll, I'll see you in two weeks. I'll see you in two weeks, bitch. <laughs> so that's what you do. You keep coming back, and then before you know it, you got one, one little store in this strip mall. It's embarrassing. And then you get two, and then three. Before you know it, if you stay consistent and you keep going and saying hello repetitively, you can end up being the guy that, that locks down 50, 60, 70, 80% of that entire strip mall. I was locking down 50 to 60% of the strip malls and plazas in my area. Uh, not all of them, some of them just 20%. Oh, excuse me, thank you. But little by little, within a period, a very short period of time, of just a couple of weeks, you can grow an entire, hello, you can grow an entire business and now be pulling, I don't know, one to two to three hundred dollars a day. I think I was 150, 170, 170 bucks a day 
from doing window cleaning. And I remember coming home, man. I, I had just enough money to pay the rent and get a money order down to like, I had like, our rent was only 500 bucks when we first moved in there. It went up, I like got up to like $527 and I paid the rent. Then I went out and I cleaned windows again and I was able to pay the cell phone bill. I begged I begged T-Mobile, or it was Metro PCS, to please keep my cell phone on just one more day. And they did, and I was able to barely pay that. And then the electricity was about to get shut off and I barely paid that, and I just kept going out and cleaning windows, freezing my ass off, scared shitless. When you're all alone and afraid, and you're out there on your own, but you know that it's working, and you see, right? You can get through the dark night of the soul. You can get through those terrifying times. And those times burn a lesson inside of you that's so deep and so strong that you don't ever want to go back there ever again. So that's why even if you have, you know, you get your five grand in the bank, finally, you get five grand, 10, then 15, 25, 30, 35,000 dollars in the bank or whatever that is to you. Then you, you get your business legit and then you're paying taxes and you got insurance and all that. And then you, and, you, and, and it gets to that point where you're always looking back at that time. And that time is like, it's like, ooh, it's like a lion in a cage. It's like a it's like a gorilla in a cage, bro. And you look at it, it's like <sighs> it's just waiting to get out. It's waiting for you to screw up one time, so it can get out of that cage and maul you, right? You take your whip, you know, and you go. You take your whip and you go. Whoosh, shut up. <laughs> You, you, you literally, you got to look at those. It's a demon in a cage, and it's always at the bottom of underneath the steps, and it's waiting for you to mess up, dude, so it can run you up, brother. That's this this book. Um, ooh, I should write a book about that. There, there's this um, Outwitting the Devil is a book by Napoleon Hill. And it talks about staying on the straight and narrow. Like, don't do drugs. Don't drink. If you drink, don't drink and drive. Just keep your ass on a... The, the, the path is narrow and the gate is very small, and you gotta just stay on that straight and narrow because, it, dude, that demon keep them objectified. Steer your ass in the bottom. Of, you go down in the, the bottom of the steps and the demons under the steps are like this, and you're sitting there eating. You're sitting there eating um Twizzler sticks. Oh, what is that? Uh, licorice, right? You're pulling the rope off, and the demons. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a bad little demon <laughs> that's i'm twisted man but that when you see things like that you you know you got to keep that fucker locked away because you wish you be yeah all right that's the end of this video now check out my podcast on soundcloud.com i'll put a description uh in the link in the description uh what's up i'm keith kelfis you want to get on my email list i've got a free video series on the landscaping employee trap.com i'll put a link below uh, also for the window cleaning as well my channel is the window cleaning blueprint the landscaping employee trap and if you're into the, e the deep psychological stuff that i'm talking about my other channel is called i am ability and I got lots of vlogs and video footage, but just not enough time to edit it right now. I love you. Take care of yourself. And I wish you the best. I really do. Peace.